Links to the project source code and the one optional asset in the description. Here's the top level concept for this line of sight system. We have a green player character on the left and an NPC on the right. The NPC needs to be able to detect the player in its visual range. We will first add an area 3D cone stemming from the NPC's face that represents everything the NPC can detect. We simply check every couple of frames if the player is inside this cone. If so, we can see them. Easy enough. However, this will not account for obstacles and obstructions that may interrupt the line of sight, like this brown wall. Even though this wall blocks the line of sight, the cone will still detect the player through it and we will have an unrealistic system. To fix this, we can occasionally fire off a ray cast from the NPC to the player to detect any obstacles between us and the player character. If the ray cast hits the player without issue, the NPC can see them. If the ray cast hits anything else, there is an obstacle between them and the player character cannot be seen. This combination of cone and ray cast should be performant and has an easy setup, so feel free to follow along in the next section. The one prerequisite for this tutorial is a 3D character controller of any kind, so long as it can walk around a bit like this. There are many tutorials for setting that up quickly, so if you don't have one, I recommend checking out the links in the description and then returning here. If you do have one, make sure you have a functional collision shape with at least these default mask and layer settings for this tutorial. Let's begin. Okay, here we have a new project. All we have is the uh, player character controller. We need a new scene to uh, run around in, so we're going to call that world. We get a 3D scene, rename it to world. We need a floor, so let's inst uh, not instantiate, let's add a CSG mesh here. Lovely. Uh, go to the inspector, make it a plane, check off collision. We're going to make this 2020. Okay, and then we're going to instantiate here under world our player. Drag that up. Control S, hit play, select current, or look around. Okay, seems to be working just fine. Uh, we're going to go into the debug and check off visible collision shapes. Okay, now we need our NPC. So let's make a new scene. NPC. Make it a spatial. Rename that to NPC. And then we want to add uh, two meshes. I think it'd be just normal meshes. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate here. Go to the mesh, make this a sphere. This will be the base. And this one will also be a sphere. And we're gonna move it. Uh, this has to be uh, in the negative Z. Make sure this is pointing in the negative Z. Um, move this forward, make this 0 0.5 and 1. And we're gonna drag it to the front. And I'm gonna color it uh, red because I think that would very much help tell where it's pointing. Okay, lovely. Uh, the next thing we want is the actual cone area. So let's add an area node here. Um, we need a collision shape. So let's go ahead and get that resource, that cone resource, and drag it right in. Okay, here it is. Double click on it, new inherited. Uh, I'm gonna save it first. And then you wanna right click uh, on the actual node itself and clear inheritance. You wanna right click on this cone or on the cone mesh, uh, make it the root, delete the child now, and then uh, we want to rotate this 90 degrees in the X, so that it's pointing forward, lovely. Go back to the MPC, we are going to drag the cone TSCN under area, and we're going to move it forward. Uh, we want to make this way bigger, let's make it 10 by 10 by 10, and drag it forward so you can still see things. Okay, and now we want to uh, click on the mesh resource here and go single convex collision sibling. We're going to make the original mesh here invisible. So now we have a collision shape uh, that is in the shape of a cone, which is really nice because Godot doesn't do that very easily. Um, we're going to rename this to vision area. Okay, we're going to add a script to the NPC, npc.godot. Uh, then we want to add a timer. We could check for collisions every frame, um, but I like a little bit more control, so let's make this a uh, fourth of a second timer, 0 0.25 seconds. Click on Auto Start, go into the Node tab. Uh, we're going to rename this to Vision Timer. Go to Timeout here, connect it. Perfect. So, time for the code. Uh, first of all, we want to get all of the overlapping bodies. So we're going to store that in this overlaps um, variable, and it's just going to check everything in the cone, get all the uh, things that overlap with it. So uh, if 
um, the array of overlaps is as any elements if its size is greater than zero. Then for each element, oops, for each element, um, we're going to check if that element is the player by checking its name. Okay, and here we can actually just test it. Say print I see you. Go back to our world and instantiate the NPC. Okay, here he is, lovely. Uh, we're gonna move him over here. We wanna make sure that that is uh, you know, inside the player. Give it some room so you can back up and be out of range. Hit play. Okay, we can see in the bottom in our console that he does see us and we move out. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell because <laughs> it's not printing anymore, but uh, he doesn't see us. It's working, lovely. Okay, time to implement the uh, obstacle system. So we're gonna have that be passed for now. Go back to the world, instantiate a, or add a new uh, CSG mesh. Make a box, boxes are good. Okay, we're gonna have it use collision. We're gonna change these to four by four by four. And then we're gonna place it in front of the NPC. So this is a block collision, right now it won't do anything but that's what we're going to implement. Obstacle detection, lovely. NPC, we need to add a new node to this. This is going to be our raycast, very important. Vision raycast, we're gonna call it, oops. Vision raycast, okay. Um, while we're here, we're actually, we need to go to the inspector. We want to enable it and cast it to negative 100Z, just to give it enough range. Um, yeah, we'll give it a debug shape of red. Okay, uh, it's back to the script. So when we hit the player, we need to check uh, if there's any obstacles. So let's get the player's position. We can do that um, because we know that the current overlap entity is the player. Uh, then we want to force the raycast to point at the player's position, which we just got. So we're gonna use the look at method here, just like this. Uh, then we want to um, force the raycast to fire off and get us some data. If the raycast hits anything, then we want to get that data of the hit. Oops, go like this, lovely. We use that with get collider, which we store in this collider uh, object. And then if the collider is the player, uh, then we know that we can see them. So for our purposes, we can say, uh, we're gonna change the debug's color to red again. Let me get print, I see you, to be all spooky. And then down here, we if, if we hit anything else that's not the player, uh, we want to change it to maybe, I don't know, green. Green's pretty good. So you can do that like this, with the debug shape custom color. And I don't see you. So let's see if this is working correctly. We're gonna hit play. Okay, so we see this green laser beam. It's really annoying in our screen. Um, but uh, yeah, so the green means that he doesn't see us. The red means that he does. As you can see when we're behind the box, he doesn't see us. And we can run around in front. He sees us in the console as well. We back up and he no longer checks to see if we're there because we're out of his range. So it's working perfectly. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks.